good morning and actually come before our loving God to praise him this morning. Please stand if you feel comfortable to do so as we sing our first hymn. Thy hand, O Lord, has guided thy flock from age to age. the the words of our prayer of unity. Almighty and everlasting God, as we come together as your church, the body of Christ, we thank you that we can worship you together, even if we are not in the same place. We thank you for this opportunity to pray together Remember each other at this time. Thank you that you have brought us safely to this day, and we ask that you keep us from danger. Guide us in all that we do, and may what we do be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
we prepare to worship by saying together the words of the prayer of preparation. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's been a bit of a hot week, and I have to say, hot weeks make me a bit grumpy. So that means I have definitely got a lot to reflect on and bring to the Lord, because a lot of stuff has not exactly gone wrong, but I've probably been maybe a little bit sharper with people than I should have, and I'm sure there's a whole load of other stuff as well. And all of us have stuff that will have happened this week which we really regret, stuff that we wish that we had done and stuff that we wish we hadn't done as well. So let's just take a moment to reflect on those things in our heart as we prepare to confess them to our Lord. And we say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of what we have failed to do for the sake of Jesus Christ for us. Forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And in the knowledge that we have indeed been forgiven, we want to praise our Lord, and our next hymn will be ready for you which if you've it on the screen or if you've got a book will be on a sheet so let's stand and sing together
prayers lift heavenwards. We say together the words of the Collect for today, the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Our first reading is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so, from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gospel reading. <coughs> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will make them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants his master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. 
But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Lord. Do please be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, David and Brenda. Lord God, merciful Father, maker of all that is seen and unseen, <clears throat> may the words of my mouth be from my heart, and may they be acceptable in your sight and fruitful for those who hear. Amen. I'd like to start by telling you a little story. There's a man in a lifeboat. The lifeboat is the finest lifeboat ever built. And the man is quite simply the nicest, finest man and best lifeboatman ever. The man is sailing his lifeboat around and the water is filled with his children swimming about. At the moment, the water is calm and warm and the swimmers are having a great time laughing about and enjoying the water. They can't see any danger, but the lifeboatman knows that the water will not always be calm. And even if it is and the swimmers stay in the water, then eventually they will grow tired and they will perish. He is also experienced enough and wise enough to know that he cannot force any of the swimmers into the lifeboat, because whereas this may save one, it will simply scare away the other swimmers, and this will have done more harm than good. There's also another swimmer swimming about, telling the swimmer all sorts of lies to persuade them to stay in the water and away from the boat. The lifeboatman tells the swimmers the danger they're in. And every now and then he gets through to one of them who gets into the boat. Now this is how I would describe my faith. If you were to ask me, we are the swimmers and our Lord Jesus is the lifeboatman. To me this is faith, this is my faith. I heard the story the lifeboatman told me, I believed it and I got into the lifeboat. I believe, I think we've all got, we would all have a different story about our faith. We describe it in our own ways. Faith is not something we achieve. It is grace. It is a gift from the Lord our God. I suspect most, if not all of us, would point to some event of time or time in our past when our faith was given to us in some way. For myself, my faith was given to me as a gift when I was a small primary school child. I I think I was about eight or nine. My school had walked to the church, was about two miles away, for a carol service. And yes, school children walked everywhere in those days. And I was sitting in a pew towards the middle of the church, and the vicar was droning on about I knew not what or cared about even less. I was looking at a painted crucifix on a column in front of me. This crucifix fascinated me, I couldn't take my eyes off it. And the thought just popped into my head, it's all true. Almost 60 years later, and I can still remember it like it was five minutes ago. I suspect that the Lord our God offers this gift to all men and women in as many different ways as there are many different men and women. But too many of us can't or won't listen. So faith is the first gift from God that we, as believers, knowingly receive. I say the gift, the first gift, because without faith, then any church is just a not very fun social club. We can see from today's reading from Hebrews a very good biblical description of faith. It's not a definition of faith. To define faith, it would take me five days. It's a description of faith, and I'll read it. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. It is faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So that is my very poor attempt to examine and explain what faith is. What is faith not? Faith is not a positive feeling. Without our faith, 
I suspect that many of us would be living a very different life. Perhaps momentarily more enjoyable, possibly more comfortable, maybe with a bit more money in the bank. Those of us with the gift of faith live a life in which we habitually walk against the tide. The world is going that way, we are going that way. Humanity in general is walking one way and we are walking the other way. I've said that twice, don't argue it against me. Or at least we should be. Someone should perhaps point that out to the church establishment. Faith is being guided and motivated by love instead of ambition or anger or impatience. Some of us lose friends when we come to faith. Some of us lose a lot more. We live a life of sacrifice, from dropping a few coins into the hands of the homeless man or woman outside Tesco's to dropping a few, hands, few coins into the hands of the man or woman outside Tesco's and everything in between. Faith is not blind optimism. We have faith because it has been given to us by the Lord our God. And in my own experience, and I suspect in the experience of many of us, blind optimism is not a major component or result of our faith. We have hopes, but they are anything but blind, because all our hopes are based upon the promises of our God, related and told to us through the Holy Scriptures, and which our faith enables us to rely on if we just keep sticking on in there. The first thing we do when we come to faith is we want to find out more about this great mystery. So we read the Bible, and we ask questions, and we smile a lot more. Faith is not a manufactured, hope-so attitude. We can't see or touch or taste or hear or smell what we believe in. But we can sense in our hearts, if we give ourselves the chance, the reality, the weight, the meat of our faith. We don't cross our fingers when we say the Apostles' Creed. We don't touch wood when we pray. All our hope is anchored in our trust in God. Faith is not an intellectual nod of agreement to a belief. If that was all our faith was, then how many of us would turn up every Sunday? Who would put out the chairs? Who would make the lunches? Who would play the music? Who would sing in the choir? Who would work the sound system? Who would put on an album on a hot day? Certainly not me. Welcome people at the door. Who would do that? Who would spend our time reading and studying the Bible? Praying for other people's benefit? Who would tolerate the people we don't particularly like or agree with in our lives? If our faith was nothing more than a life cho lifestyle choice, then how many of us would accept the restrictions on our lives that our faith compels us to live by? I can't tell you how many people there are who are walking around without a broken nose because I'm a Christian. <laughs> faith is not believing in spite of the evidence. Believing in spite of the evidence is, I suspect, proof of an absence of faith. Proof of a troubled mind seeking some way to strike out against something or someone. I read about science and I watch science programmes on the telly and yes, I am that boring. And where others see proof that God does not exist, I see the evidence of how God did it. The theory of evolution as it applies to us is the exception that proves the rule for me there. I think this is because I am watching with the faith our God has given me. Faith is not a power which you can possess to create your own future. Faith is a gift from God, allowing us to trust in the future God has promised us. Hands up everybody here who would prefer to plan your own future instead of trusting in God's plan for you. Interesting. Our faith is in God, not in ourselves. I've heard that there is a church in America calling itself the faith movement and it's growing. But this church isn't teaching the gospel, it's selling the gospel. This church is telling people that if they have faith, they can move mountains through their own efforts. They are selling the message that faith will enrich their lives and empower them. This is not faith. This is selling positive thinking in a cassock. God is not a lever that we can use to move mountains. God is not a tool we can use to enrich ourselves at the expense of others. Our faith tells us that God will do 
what is best for all of us. The Lord our God will give us what we need, not what we want. Our faith in God is our willingness to put all our trust in God. When you believe in God, you trust in his promises. You can't see them, but you trust in them. It's all about trusting God. Because we are human, our trust in God, it ebbs and flows. Because we are human and we blow hot and cold. Don't be ashamed of that. Don't judge or look down on others because of that. We're human because that is how God made us. By faith, like everything else, but faith, like everything else, will grow the more you practice it. Prayer is press-ups for our faith. Studying the Bible is press-ups for our faith. Practicing our faith is press-ups for our faith. Now, like any exercise, if you overdo it, you may become tired and disillusioned and you might give up. If you don't do it enough, you will grow tired and disillusioned and give up. That's why it's always best to do it as a community, as a church. The Lord our God made us to be part of a family and a congregation. But what is it all for? Why do we have this faith? What's the point? Today's gospel reading gives us a clue. Jesus himself has told us, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear, my very little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's the promise. That's the lifeboat. The Lord our God is not recruiting us for a mission. He has no enemy. He needs us to fight for him. He has no plan he cannot carry out without our help. He has no crossword he can't complete without our genius. The Lord our God asks only that we have faith in him, that we love him with all our might, all our strength, all our heart and all our mind. Sounds a lot, sounds scary. But never forget that our Lord Jesus has told us that his burden is light and his yoke is easy. This tells me that he will accept the best we can do and only the best we can do. And that doesn't mean you can't have bad days. And the best will get better the more you practice. Our Lord Jesus does not expect miracles from us. We hope for miracles from him. We ask for miracles from him. We pray for miracles from him. Sometimes we get them. The jailer in Acts 16, 30, 31, when Paul and Silas were sitting in the prison singing and there was an earthquake and it scared the jailer and he asked, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas told him, simply believe in the Lord and you will be saved and this will apply to you and to your household as well. Wow. Simply believe in the Lord and you will be saved and this will apply to you and to your household as well. Once you're in the lifeboat, you can help your family into the lifeboat, you can help your loved ones into the lifeboat, and our Lord God will, will tolerate that. The Lord our God asks nothing of us except our faith. Our works will come from our faith. And this benefits only us. Study after study has shown that being kind, being generous, being a good person, being a Christian, is actually good for us in every way, physical and mental. We bring no benefit to the Lord our God unless the love the Lord our God has for us can be counted as a benefit. I think that's a stupid idea. There is nothing we have that the Lord our God needs. He loves us as only he can. The Lord our God has stuck with us after the fall through tens of thousands of years of murder and mayhem. Constantly, time after time, calling us back to him, all the while knowing that it would take the horrific sacrifice of his own son to make us finally stop and begin to turn away from our path to self-destruction. Never flinching from the cost, the Lord our God was only waiting for the most opportune moment, dictated by our shortcomings. Yeah? When you talk to a... When you talk to a newborn baby, you don't talk to him about the nuclear physics of the sun. You talk about a bright thing up in the sky. The Lord has to wait until we've matured and grown enough to understand what he's saying to us. 
We had to wait until we were ready to hear and understand the message and then try to carry out the plan with the help of his Holy Spirit. Faith is the beginning and the end of the circle. It is one of the greatest gifts the Lord our God will give us, limited only by our own limitations. And we should not be ashamed of that. The Lord our God made us all different from the least to the greatest, from the mightiest warrior to the meekest servant, from Einstein to Forrest Gump, from the Archbishop of York to me. But he has given us all the same faith to do with as best as each one of us can do to our own abilities and energies. Our faith is made to measure. It's not off the peg. Everything the Lord our God does for us and through us is perfect until we get involved. Then we just have to muddle through, which we're not too bad at doing after a lot of practice. Amen. Thank you, Phil. You've certainly given us a lot to think on. And as a manifestation of our faith, let's stand and say together the words of the Creed. We believe in God, Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated while Jackie leads us in our time of prayer. Our responses this morning are, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, we will all respond, hear our prayer. Father God, we give you thanks that we are all called, like Abraham, into your service. May we be faithful and obedient to that calling. Eternal God, we give you thanks for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. We thank you for our ministry team here in this parish and pray that as they follow you in faith, your spirit will lead and guide them. We pray for Christians around the world who are living in fear for their lives due to persecution or hatred. Protect, guide, and keep them safe as they serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Creator God, you entrusted the earth into our care. Show us how to repair the hurt and heal the damage, as we all depend on this earth for our daily needs. Our world is in desperate need of change and we can feel overwhelmed by what is happening. Help us to see and to remember the power of prayer and to pray against the greed, destruction and harm we see around us. We pray for the situations in Ukraine, in Taiwan, and Gaza, and others around the world. We pray for peace. We pray for those people working for peace.
and we pray for the success of the initiative to export Ukraine's grain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, we thank you for holidays, for days out, and days doing nothing but resting, and for the people who remind us that it's okay to rest and who encourage us to stop when we need to. This morning we pray for all the members of our church family who are away on holiday. Keep them safe as they travel. Give them joy spent in time with family and friends. And we pray that they will return rested, refreshed and renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Generous God, we thank you for the help we are able to provide for those in need in our town. We thank you especially for all who contribute to and volunteer for Restore and the Tea Room. We pray for your blessing on the planned changes to the Tea Room in September. And we thank you for each member of the team as they have a well-earned rest this month. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Gracious God, we thank you for our families, friends, and our community. We pray for all who have been celebrating events recently, births, baptisms, weddings, anniversaries. We pray that the joys felt during these celebrations will be shared with family and friends and bring about long-lasting and happy memories. And will also be opportunities to share your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Faithful God, we thank you for all who care for us every day, especially those we take for granted. We pray for all who are worn out and weary for whatever reason, sickness, pain, grief, or just the daily struggles of life. In a moment of quiet, please bring before God anyone on your mind this morning. We pray that in the midst of their suffering and pain, we, with your Holy Spirit, will be able to bring them the love, the healing, and the support and hope that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. And Father God, this morning we pray for all those we know and love who do not know or acknowledge you. We pray, Father, they will hear you and they will respond to your call. And we pray that all who hear you speaking to them will answer in a positive way. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Eternal God, we thank you for your promise that you hear our prayers. Strengthen our faith in that promise. 
so that our lives might proclaim your love, mercy and goodness to all we meet. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Please stand for the peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to their, him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Peace be with you. And our next song is All I Once Held Dear. And if you're using the hymn books, it's number 646. Eucharistic prayer, those of you who are avid readers of the newsletter, which is obviously all of you, um, will have seen in the last couple of weeks a note to say that today is the first Sunday that we are going to return to the chalice rather than in tainting. It seems like an awful, awful long while. Um, now, if you are uncomfortable um, to receive the chalice, that's absolutely fine. Receiving the host is still receiving full communion. So please don't feel in any way that if you would prefer not to receive the chalice, that you haven't partaken of communion because you have. Um, I will distribute the hosts and Phil will have the chalice. If when he gets to you, you would prefer not to have the wine, 
then please just indicate that to be the case. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave us, your people, the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet, in the coming of your Son, Lord Jesus, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen, Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen, Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim that he, the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth, to feast with St. Andrew and all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Lord, we have broken your spirit and received your life by the power of your spirit. Keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our final song is Men of Faith, which is number 921, if you're using the hymn book. So please stand if you're comfortable and to sing. Final blessing, obviously, notices. It wouldn't be the Church of England if we didn't have notices. Um, just a reminder that this Tuesday is Joyce Hancock's funeral. It's at Pitsy Crematorium. All are welcome. There is a notice about it on your news sheet, and all are welcome to return here. Um, to share fellowship and refreshments with Joyce's family. They're, they're so grateful for all the prayers and all the messages that they've had. Um, we're always going to miss Joyce and Tom, um, but we know that they're reunited and I'm quite sure they're looking down on us now. Um, so that's that. Um, if anyone hasn't had the chance to write a message on a card um, the box is at the back um, and those messages will be going to Joyce's family so if you've not had a chance to write anything and you would like to do so please do so um, in two weeks time well 13 days to be precise on the 20th of August um, there will be tea and cake at the vicarage I might make the cakes although of course if I tell you that you won't come 
Um, maybe that's my cunning plan. Um, there will be tea and cake and scones. Uh, please come along from two till four. It's not really a fundraiser, but if anyone wants to make any donations on the day for the delicious cakes that you're going to eat, um, then that will go to the restoration fund. And the added bonus is, of course, you get to cuddle George the Vicarage Cat. So you don't get to cuddle me, just saying, just in case anyone thought that. I don't do cuddles. Um, but the cat, he loves it. Um, so please do come along to that. Um, those of you that have passed Holy Cross recently will have seen it's not looking as beautiful as it should be, but it's looking beautiful in another way because we've now got the scaffolding up because the work has commenced on the front of the building. Um, tight timescale. It's got to be all done before our next wedding in September. But, you know, I, for one, I'm just so thankful that this has started. Um, we're still desperately raising money so we can do the inside. And just a save the date, the 17th and the 18th of September is our patronal festival at Holy Cross, and it is our special weekend of love. So we will be having displays. If you got married at Holy Cross and you have a photograph of yourself, then we would love the photograph because we're going to have a display of weddings through the ages. If you still have your wedding dress, you don't need to fit into it, but if you do still have your wedding dress, we would love to have a display of wedding dresses as well and wedding suits. You know, I don't want to leave the blokes out, but you know that's not quite as exciting. Um, it would be great to have that. We're going to have a special service on the Saturday afternoon celebrating love and we're going to be inviting back couples that have been married um, not just couples that we've married recently, but if any of you know anyone who got married at Holy Cross, I'm going to put something on Facebook as well, um, but it would be great for people to come along and just remember those vows that they took. It's not going to be a renewal of vows service, but just to remember that day that they stood in Holy Cross and pledged their love. And then on the Sunday, um, we're going to have a songs of praise as well as... Um, our normal even song. Um, there will be music throughout the day. There will be refreshments on the Saturday morning. I think we're going to be having, courtesy of um, Peter, a barbecue. Um, and in the, there'll also be cakes. I might make more cakes. You never know. Um, but it will be a really, really good weekend. There'll be children's activities as well. Um, so please come w along and celebrate the fact that Holy Cross is still standing after centuries and help us to make sure it keeps standing for some more centuries. And hopefully it will be sunny as well. I'm, I'm full of hope, always, as Phil told us. Um, I don't think there is anything else I'm looking around. Have we got any other notices? No? Is that enough? Yeah. In that case, would you like to stand for the blessing? The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and those you love and pray for, and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.